Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Modesty33 here, aka Crystal with a C. Back at you with another video. If you're new to my channel, you just happen to click on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I try to put out one or two videos a week. I try, you guys. I really do try. But um, I do sit down to reviews, reactions, which are on hold, as well as vlogs, because we're not out here going a whole bunch of places in the hot spot of COVID, which is in Houston, Texas. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but once we do get back to out and being out and about, yeah, I will be getting back to vlogs. But if any of that interests you, do make sure you check out the prior videos on my channel. And if you see anything you like before you leave, make sure you subscribe. So this is my second time recording this video today because I realized when I recorded it yesterday that I left out some very important things. So this video today is going to be about moving companies. So... Um, as you may or may not know, I recently moved from South Carolina to Houston, Texas, and I did utilize a moving company. So I did want to talk a little bit about that as far as the process, like as far as my prior moves and what made me decide to go ahead and go with a moving company and some interesting facts about moving companies that, you know, you may not know or that you might be interested in. So if you're interested in any of those items, definitely keep watching. So I do have like my notes here, you guys, because again, I did film this yesterday and I realized I missed out on a few important items. So I want to make sure I wrote things down so we don't miss anything in this video um, and we stay on task, of course. So um, if I'm looking down, that's why I'm looking down. But I just have like my notes like that are right here in front of me. So hopefully the lighting and everything is good. You guys can see me OK. I just finished up work for the day. So I did want to go ahead and record this while my hair is still big and things before I wash my hair, which is not going to be today, but it is going to be this week. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So um, moving companies. So um, I did utilize, like I said um, before, a moving company from this move, which was from South Carolina to Houston. But let me give you a little history about my moves in the past. So I'm not going to count moves to college because... I'm just not going to count those. I'm just going to count adult moves, which I consider adult moves. I'm not saying you're not an adult if you're in college, but like I consider like moving um, for like jobs or for like, I don't know, moving from apartment to house. Like that's what I'm, those are the moves I'm going to be discussing here. So my first move, um, and I'm not even yet going to include my international move when I moved to London for four months. That is kind of a major move. It definitely is a major move, but it wasn't like uprooting. I was just there for four months. So um, yeah, we're just going to talk about three different moves that I've done um, in the past 12 years and kind of what was my decision making and in going into that and why with this particular move, I decided to do yeah, the moving company. So the first move was about like 12 years ago. That move um, was from Florida, which is where I am from, my family's from, not where I'm originally from, but where I hail from for all intents and purposes. So um, I did move from Florida around 12 years ago. I was like around 23, 24. I had graduated with my master's in social work and I was living at home with my parents trying to get a job. So I did in fact get a job in South Carolina. So um, that was my first move. So I moved from Florida to South Carolina. That particular move, we did like a moving truck. So we did go through Penske, which does have, you know, various uh, moving items and supplies and, and trucks. So I did um, end up renting a truck through Penske Trucking. And I think that cost around like between six and eight hundred dollars for the truck. And then you had to, of course, fill it up on gas um, when you did arrive to the destination. So I did that because um, my parents were helping me move. I didn't have a lot of items during that move because I was just kind of starting off. I moved from, again, my parents' home to an apartment. So um, most of the items that I have as far as furniture were concerned were gifted to me by family members, like couches and tables, things of that nature. So uh, we did load that up into a uh, moving truck and it was my parents as well as my brother and my sister-in-law we all kind of drove up from Florida or yeah, drove from Florida to South Carolina. It was like a six hour drive um, in the moving truck and went ahead and got to the apartment, you know, loaded it up and then moved all the stuff out when we got there. Easy peasy. That was that particular move. So did the moving truck because again, my parents and my family were helping me move and it was not a lot of stuff to be moved. So 
there's that one. The second move um, I did was from the apartment in South Carolina to my house that I owned in South Carolina. That was back in 2012. And with that particular move, I had some friends from church. It was a, actually a good amount of friends from church actually helped me with that move. So we just kind of like came together and coordinated on a particular day after I ended up closing on the house. Um, I was able to get like a group, probably a group of like 15, 20 of my friends from church to go ahead and help me do the move. And that move was like, um, you know, in various stages because um, I had to clear out my apartment, move everything over to the house. So I had like one friend who kind of helped me do um, a lot of that kind of pre-moving as far as boxes. And then on the day of my actual move, I had people come in who moved the actual furniture. Then we cleaned out the apartment, then moved everything over to the house unpacked everything and then like my friends they kind of set up the furniture all of that in the house you know moved it where I wanted it um wasn't quite as easy peasy as the first move but it wasn't really stressful um because it was so many people kind of coming together and helping out so god bless them so um that was back in 2012 so um and with that I did get a moving truck from U-Haul and we went and picked up the truck ended up you know again getting it situated moving the stuff from the apartment into the moving truck the u-haul and then when we got the u-haul over to the house we ended up unpacking it so that was that particular move now with this one and again this move just recently happened back in march of this year and that was from houston or that was from south carolina to houston where i am currently today um decided to do a moving company and not do either of those two options for a variety of reasons number one i knew i was moving from a house to an apartment and this move was going to be a bit more intricate because um i was downsizing especially while well, i was yeah downsizing from a four bedroom house pretty much four bedrooms yeah house to a two bedroom apartment so um, there was a lot of things that were sold, given away, all that jazz. Um, but um, I have like a lot of furniture that I like, yeah, purchased and received when I moved into the house. So all of my furniture is still fairly new. So I knew I wasn't going to sell or give away any of my main furniture, that this was going to be used to furnish my home. And it's good furniture. Um, it was, you know, good money put into it. So wasn't going to be selling it or giving it away. So yeah, this was all going to be coming with me. Um, the other thing was decided not to do a moving truck because from South Carolina to Houston, it was around like when I did map quest it or Google map it, it was like around 15 hours. I, the furthest I've driven has been like eight hours. Um, I've never driven over eight hours at one time. So I was not going to be driving 15 hours and I didn't have any friends or family members that were going to do that either. Um, so the issue was trying to go through friends because I could have tried to ask and inquire of friends, you know, offered money to friends to help with that and kind of do the U-Haul or, you know, the trucking company thing again. However, because this move again was going to be a bit more intricate, um, what I did not want to happen was people get busy. They have other responsibilities. Um, they back out. Even when you do offer people money, um, because they're not, again, you're not in a contract with them. They're not a professional agency. People have the right to, you know, change their mind, back out. Hey, I can't help you that day. I'm sorry this came up, yada, yada. I did not want that to happen. And furthermore, um, a lot of people, um, well, not a lot of people, but like some of the people I, I really had this conversation with. Um, when I talked about moving from South Carolina to Houston and what I really wanted to do and what I emphasized the most with this move is I wanted to leave the right way. What does that mean? I wanted to leave my job the right way because I feel like, you know, we don't want to burn bridges. We're building bridges, you know, um, in these, in, in these streets, we build in bridges. So I don't, um, I always want to build bridges where if I have to cross that bridge again, if I have to go back. I want to be welcome back. I want, you know, my character and my work to always speak for me. So I did not want any issues with anyone or to feel some kind of way about anyone in leaving. So that was my major emphasis in leaving South Carolina. I wanted to leave the right way with everybody. So I didn't want to put unrealistic expectations on people to help me move when, um, Maybe they could have done it, but maybe they couldn't have done it. And I just did not want to risk it because this was a major move. It was a promotional opportunity. It had to be done around a certain time. 
um, so I could go ahead and start work and everything could be situated the way it's supposed to. I could put in leave on my job. Like there were a lot of things that had to go into this move, the sale of my home. So yeah, um, I could not put that in the hands of people who again, um, you know, could or could not, you know, maybe come through that, that just could not be an option for me. So I did decide to go with the moving company. Um, the company I went with was American Van Lines. How did I go ahead and decide about, you know, doing the moving company outside of those reasons that I just discussed? So um, when I did decide I was going to do a moving company, um, I went ahead and what do we do when we, you know, search for things? We do a Google search, of course. So I did a Google search of like the top rated moving companies in the country. And it gave me like a list of like 20 um, that I went through. And I think I called probably about 10 and got quotes from them. One company actually did come to my home and they did an in-person quote. A lot of people will tell you that the in-person quotes are the best. So, you know, they can actually see the equipment and items that you want moved. But all companies don't do in-person quotes. I did have one, again, that came and did that in-person quote. Um, however, most of the quotes are going to be done by telephone. So you just have to kind of go around and take an inventory of a lot of your items and just let them know what you're looking at. Um, adding to the inventory the list of things to move. They have a particular price that's assessed to certain items. So that's how they generate a price for you as far as the items that you want moved. And then you have to also keep it, um, take into account that you're paying for, um, you do, you do have like various types of moves like a partial pack or a full pack so partial pack means that like w that's the type of move that I did where I essentially um, packed the majority of my items that could go into boxes and then when the moving company came they moved all those boxes into the truck so that's a partial pack and then they will also um um, in addition to me packing down boxes, everything that did not fit in boxes, they go ahead and they will wrap that. They will make sure that it's safe, such as my television, my couches, my table. Those things, uh, the moving company did pack for me or they did wrap them up. The chairs, um, dressers, nightstands, all of that that could not fit into a box. They went ahead and packed those items for me and put them onto the truck. So that's what's considered a partial pack. You can also do a full pack where they will come in, you don't have to lift a finger, and they will actually pack up all your boxes for you and make sure that everything is packed appropriately and then also pack it into the truck. Keep in mind that if you do a full pack, it's going to be a lot more expensive than a partial pack. Those were things that I kept in mind that, you know, hey, my hands work so I can, in fact, pack up items into boxes. Um, you want to pack your things the way you want them packed. So you have to just kind of keep those things in mind. If you don't want people touching all over your stuff, it's probably more advisable to do a partial pack as opposed to a full pack. And then you're going to save some more money that way. So I decided to go with the partial pack. Um, when I did, um, go with this particular company, what I was kind of looking at is I did go on when I did like do the search for the particular companies and got quotes. Um, again, a lot of things go into what is generated with a quote, um, where your location is, the location you're going to. Um, they do um, equate for, they do account for the time of the drivers and the movers, um, as well as the gas to get to the location, the um, amount of days, drive time, tolls, all of that, you know, hotels for the drivers, like all of that is like added into the price that you're going to be paying for like a moving company. So it's not just like moving your stuff from a truck and then moving it, um, unpacking it and unpacking, like packing it and then unpacking it at the location. There's a lot of things that do go into it that they do roll into the cost of, you know, as far as what you're going to be paying the moving company. And that's why a lot of times people choose not to go with a moving company because they are considerably more expensive than if you just rented a U-Haul truck, if you were able to do that. Or again, if you had friends or family that could help you do your move. Um, moving companies, a lot of times um, companies will pay for people to move. And so that's where a lot of business for moving companies come in, where a business will pay for an employee to be relocated. Or if you do get a job, that moving company will be compensated by your employer. Um, unfortunately, that was not the case with me. So I did pay out of pocket for my move. I was okay with that as long as it was done correctly. So I did again go with American Van Lines. 
Um, and essentially, I just looked at reviews with the company. Um, they were about mid-range as far as pricing was concerned. You don't want to go too low and you don't want to go too high because a lot of times the quote will change um, along the way based on various factors, such as the date that you're moving. Like if you do a summer move, it's going to be considerably more expensive than, say, doing a springtime or fall move or a winter move. So that kind of takes into account with the quote as well. Also, um, what else? I think I wrote something else down. Yeah, the time of year that you're moving, um, the items that are being moved, that takes, um, that's a factor as well. When you add and take away items, the quote will change. Sometimes it will go down, sometimes it'll go up. Sometimes, you know, delays or different things that happen along the way will impact your quote. So don't, you have to be, keep in mind that you have to be flexible and you have to kind of like have a cushion as far as what they tell you um, you're actually going to be paying as opposed to what you're going to be paying when the items um, are moved into your um, new location when it's all said and done. So definitely ask those questions as far as what is going to impact this quote that you're giving me, what factors, um, you know, will actually end up increasing this quote because a quote can increase from what they originally give you, um, even if you do sign like a contract because, again, if you add different items after the contract is signed, they'll send you an updated contract, but they will add on the extra cost for that. So definitely keep that in mind when you're doing your inventory and when you're kind of like letting them know what you want moved, when you want it moved. So those are all factors to take into account. So hopefully that was, you know, clear. So let me move on to, um, again, with this particular company, again, it was American Van Lines. They were mid-range. They had pretty good reviews through um, like Better Business Bureau. That's kind of where I looked at as well, like any complaints against the organization or the moving company, I looked there. Also just kind of looked at general reviews and ratings from people who did recent moves. Now you find every company is gonna have negative reviews, but definitely look at them and take them, um, you know, really like take them into consideration and kind of like, you have to kind of filter in people's complaints because like moving times, like when people move, it's a very, it can be very stressful and anxiety provoking. So some people, are a little bit unreasonable, I will say that. And some people have valid and, you know, complaints and concerns with their moves. So you just have to kind of read into it and just kind of make your best judgment and determination. Also, if you can look at YouTube videos such as this one, anyone who reviews certain companies, I would definitely recommend that. Um, so also, you want to keep in mind too, like when I did my Google search, I did like go and put my information in on certain websites. Now, when I did talk with a certain moving company, not the one that I went with, but it was another company, they said that you really shouldn't do that because you get all kinds of calls. You get flooded with calls from different companies that aren't necessarily professional movers. They can be brokers. What is the difference between a broker and a moving company? Well, brokers, um, essentially, they're not the ones who are actually doing the move. They broker your move, being that they like outsource your move to different movers or to different um friends or companies and these people aren't necessarily insured to be moving your items or insured if something is to happen to your items so you don't want to go with a broker you want to go with a professional moving company brokers can get you yeah deals and they can say hey you know your move you know they can give you a quote that will be like considerably cheaper than like a moving company but this is not the time i would say to cut corners you really don't want the stress of like I've heard a lot of kind of like I've heard a lot of horror stories with moving companies and with brokers and all of that where you know they will come pick up your stuff and you know hey you get this little quote we're gonna do it yes it's gonna be awesome then they get your stuff and then when they get to the other side they're like well you know they call you on the phone and they you know you got to do a Liam Neeson taking like they're like hey you know we got your stuff if you want it back you got to give us two thousand dollars more you know, so then you got like, listen, I, I don't know who you are, but I have to find you and I'm going to hurt you. Like, you got to do the Liam Neeson to get your stuff back. And that is not acceptable. Like, that is not acceptable. So do not cut corners in this process if you're wanting to do a moving company. Like, just just put the bill. If that's what you want to do, you have to put the bill for it because otherwise you're going to get a lot of unnecessary stress. 
you don't want your, you know, your couch to be held for ransom, you know, for another $2,000 that you didn't even pay for the couch. That's not acceptable, you guys. That wasn't acceptable to me. So I was willing to pay a certain amount for my items to be moved. You have to really come up with a budget for that and be realistic based on the quotes that you're getting and see what you're willing to do, what your budget can, you know, afford and what you can, you know, as far as like a cushion, what you what is acceptable to you uh, is what I'm trying to say with that. But definitely um, be mindful. Do not go with a brokerage. Go with an, a professional moving company. Even if it costs you a bit more, you will have less stress in the end. Um, the other thing is, like I said, go with a company that's mid-range, that's not too high, that's not too low. Um, mid-range company is good because, um, again, like I feel like they're, you know, your quote is going to be very realistic to what you're going to pay in the end. So when I did mine, I'll give you some numbers like with American Van Lines. I think originally my quote was like 3900 something like that um, to move all of my items, to do the partial pack, like I mentioned before, um, to get everything from South Carolina to Houston. However, because there were items that I did add on, um, not the last minute, but probably within a week of the move, um, I did add on some items. And then when they got here, my couch did not fit in the elevator. So then they were like, well, we have to take your couch up the stairs. That's an additional $90. Of course, I'm going to pay you $90 because I don't have time to be playing no games. I need my couch. So yes. Um, that was added to the quote as well. So I think when everything was said and done, I paid about $4,500. So yeah, that's like $600 more than what originally I was quoted. So you have to kind of keep that buffer in mind. So if they give you a quote, really like look at, okay, well, let me add on, I would say to be on the safe side, like an additional $800 just to be on the safe side as far as a cushion for um, what you're actually going to pay when it's said and done. Hopefully you pay under that and hopefully you pay as close to the quote as possible, but you do have to keep in mind that sometimes, again, when they get to the other side, they have delays. Their things aren't the way that they thought they were going to be. They're going to, you know, call you and say, hey, you know, we had to add this on or this didn't actually fit. So what do you want to do about that? So yeah, keep that in mind as well. Let me go ahead and give you like the pros and cons of going with the moving company and we can go ahead and wrap up you guys. Um, and then if you have any other questions, definitely comment below. I'm happy to do another video or I'm happy to just kind of address your question directly. So let's talk about the pros. Pros for me with the moving company is it was a lot less stressful. I was already going through a lot of stress because selling my home, trying to go through closing, get everything prepared, pay for everything to be situated the way it needed to be situated with the house. Um, construction, all kind of stuff went into the closing of my house. That was already a lot of time. I was still working. Um, I am a single woman, so I was doing all of this by myself. Um, so yeah, I didn't have time to be taking on 50 projects. The moving company was a lot less stress, you know, for real. Like, like for me, that was definitely the best route to go as far as alleviating a lot of alleviating a lot of time and stress. Um, the other thing, it was, it was very organized. Um, there's a person that they assign to you once um, they go ahead and move your items. It's like a moving coordinator, and that person is in contact with you as far as the progress of your move, any questions you might have. So it, they just give you one point of contact. They let you know like an estimated time of arrival for your items. So that's really good. Um, you have a good bit of, pl of flexibility, like I mentioned, with the partial pack or the full pack. You can kind of like um, really um, get the type of services that you want. They do allow for a variety of different options. They can. A lot of moving companies can move your vehicle as well. Now, I did have my vehicle moved um, and shipped, but I did not go through American Van Lines to do it. I can talk about that in another video as well. But um, I did have my vehicle shipped to Houston. But um, the other thing is they do offer various insurance options for your items in case something is damaged. So you can definitely ask and inquire about that, look into that. Um, and like I mentioned, you do get assigned the moving coordinator. That's another pro. Now let me go to the cons. Um, cons really fall under one umbrella and that is the cost. So um, some cons with the cost is like, again, it is going to be more costly than doing a U-Haul or packing it yourself, driving yourself. Because, again, of the distance of this particular move, I was not going to be driving. That just, I just wasn't going to be driving. That was not an option. 
Um, and like I mentioned before, the price that you're quoted is not necessarily the price you're going to pay on the end. Like I told you, I was quoted like $3,900. I ended up paying like $4,500 at the end of um, the day. Okay, so um, yeah. So you, you can't be necessarily married to the quote that they give you because it is subject to change based on various factors. Um, the other thing, let me give you the biggest con of the moving company um, that that is outside of cost actually, is um, you don't get an exact date of um, when they're gonna pick up your items. They give you a three-day window. This is, a, again, with American Van Lines anyway. American Van Lines will give you a three-day window of when they're gonna pick up your items. They will call you the day before that they're gonna come out, but it's a three-day window. So you don't know the exact day they're gonna come and pick up your items, um, which the three-day window wasn't a big deal to me. But the other thing is when they pick up your items, there is actually a two week window of when it can be delivered. Um, and they do what's called like shared space on the truck. So they do multiple deliveries. So that's kind of how it cuts down costs as far as, you know, your particular move and moving your items that they do, you know, pack your items with other people and their items. And they kind of have a partition to, you know, um, designate what items are yours, what are somebody else's. But um, the, it is like a shared space with the truck. Um, and it is like an 18-wheeler or something like that um, as far as the truck that they get in to, you know, come in and, you know, move your items. And so um, it's a two-week window that they give you when your items can be delivered. And that is a big window, you guys. So it just kind of depends on when you're needing your items. For me, the biggest stressor with that was the fact that... Um, it wouldn't have been an issue because um, when they came and picked up my stuff, my original plan was to go ahead and fly out to Houston and be there when they got here so I could meet them and they can deliver my stuff. All is well in the world. But what ended up happening is um, I was at a Sam's Club and somebody backed into my vehicle like a few, probably like a, less than a week before I was supposed to actually, um, you know, schedule my flight and leave. So then I'm trying to figure out how to fix, get my car fixed before I'm supposed to leave this state. <laughs> and um, that is what delayed me from coming to Houston. And then um, in the interim, I think the flights, um, that was kind of in the beginning of like COVID and all of that. The flights were like really fluctuating from day to day. So one flight, you know, one way from South Carolina to Houston was like $600. Another day was $170. Y'all, what day you think I'm trying to fly on? I'm okay, you guys. Hey, hope, yeah, I'm back. Hopefully you can... Um, I ran out of space on my iPod. So, um, again, I'm, I'm wrapping up. But, yeah, um, the flights fluctuated as far as me getting to Houston. So, I, you know, scheduled on the day that it was a lot cheaper. I was going to pay $500 cheaper. But what happened was the moving company got here before I did. So, what happens is, is there's not a person who is actually here to receive your items and they have to stay here the whole time that you know they're unpacking your items they will try to charge you eight hundred dollars y'all like eight hundred additional dollars so that was a whole big issue i had to get a family member who graciously came out last minute to um you know stay here while they were unpacking my items so other like that was very stressful though because i could not be here until like a few days after they had already arrived when originally my plan was to be here before they came and i could have because i was done with work i was done with everything else but i was trying to figure out how to get my vehicle fixed my vehicle had to be shipped all that jazz so um yeah that was very stressful but um if i could have been here it probably would have been an issue so that was another thing like you do get get that like two week window of when your items are going to be delivered. So you have to keep that in mind as well um, when you do go with moving company. The other thing was, um, let's see, what else was there? Yeah, the, there has to be a person present for the full time that they're like um, unloading things. So it can't be a person because I try to get my coworker to do it who, you know, my coworker who's here. Um, to meet them and just kind of sign off but they're like no the person has to stay the whole time and of course my coworker can't do that because they're working so that's why I had to like last minute try to you know locate a family member to do it and they were able to do that so that's another thing you have to be here the full time that they're unloading everything um what was the other thing that I wanted to mention I'm kind of looking at my notes now oh a few items were missing but um it wasn't anything like really sentimental or important so it was replaced 
I didn't, I just, every, with everything that happened with the car accident, with, you know, trying to ship my car and get everything, get a quote to get my car fixed, which I had to end up getting my car shipped here and then getting it fixed here when I arrived and that, you know, it worked out. It was fine, but that was just so stressful to where I'm not going to call the moving company back about, you know, a lampshade that's missing. We just replaced the lampshade and it was fine. I just, I couldn't be bothered. So, so that was the other thing. Um, but those were kind of some of the cons with the moving company, you guys. But overall, I would say like for me, um, it was worth it. I knew that I was selling my house. So as far as the $4,500, that was going to essentially come out of the profit that I made for my home. And it did. And it was fine. So it was, you know, whatever. But um, I highly recommend a moving company just for the convenience of it. For um, if you already have a lot going on, if you're trying to sell a home, if you're trying to, you know, coordinate things with your new job or whatever you're trying to do if you got kids and you're trying to coordinate a new school and all that I would just do a moving company especially if your company is going to pay for it wherever you're moving to definitely um, inquire about that from your new employer if they pay for moving expenses if they will pay for a moving company I highly um, believe it is worth it um, I would do it again just because, like, essentially with my move, I was able to essentially get a friend to drop me off at the airport, fly, fly first class from South Carolina to Houston. Then when I got here to Houston, I took a cab um, here to the apartment, checked in, got all my stuff situated with the apartment, and all of my boxes and everything were here. Furniture was set up, all of that. So that was probably the best way this move could have gone for me. Um, so I would highly recommend to, you know, do a moving company or consider a moving company to cut out a lot of like unnecessary stress. We all know moving can be very stressful. It can be exciting, but it can also be very stressful. The moving company definitely helped to alleviate a lot of stress. It caused stress and some stress in the end, but it alleviated ultimately a lot of stress that I could have had. So that's kind of everything I want to say about the moving company. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You learned a good bit of tips. If you were interested and you didn't really know much about moving company, hopefully this answers some questions. But um, if you like this video, make sure you do give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you do share it with anyone else who is maybe moving in the future and they're considering a moving company. Definitely share this video with them. It might be helpful. Also make sure you comment below. Let me know if you've ever done a moving company. Company, would you consider a moving company? I, again, will highly recommend one. Um, not necessarily the one that I picked, even though um, I think overall they did a really good job. Um, but definitely I would highly recommend, you know, considering a moving company if you're doing a big move like the one that I did. Also, make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel. Again, you do that by hitting the red button below and hang the bell next to it so you're notified when I do upload future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much for you and all of this was very helpful. I will see you guys in my very next video. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you.